and welcome to One Take and this week we are going to be focusing on the woman behind the general budget Nirmala Sitharaman. While the budget is going to be dissected and everyone is going to give a thumbs up or thumbs down depending on which political party they are a part of what about the woman who's always consistently presented and defended the budget and also the financial policy. I go back to an incident which was at the beginning of January this year where it was a you know interaction with students and in that students interaction there was this young girl Apala she stands up and she made a couple of points in tears she said that she was tense because she was facing highs and lows and she just didn't know what to do there were two things that happened at that point of time one of course was a male colleague of that student who started laughing and mocking her and the second of course was the reaction of the finance minister she said i want to hug you apala if i could have come up to you but the fact that you admit that there are highs and lows and there are moments of tension shows that you're brave and you've crossed the bridge you should be the last person to be tensed here yeah? you're getting up to say look ups and downs the moment you have recognized ups and downs that's half the bridge crossed if i were to be closer to you now i would have given you a huge hug honestly but more than that her strong words her admonishment was actually for that male student when she said this is a typical boys mentality nirmala sitaraman should know what it's all about you know women politicians have always not had it easy it's been a tough ride for most of them cutting across party lines because it's been largely a male dominated politics and the psyche and the mindset and the cliche notion of a woman politician being just a bimbit with no mind of her own nirmala sitaraman like many of her counterparts has had to fight that mindset but she's managed to stand out she was also one of the first women defense ministers in our country and during the tough times if you remember the strategy during the balakot air strikes that's the time when she was a defense minister when this entire controversy broke out over rafal she was again the defense minister and she got the maximum number of bibes and many of them were personal ones from rahul gandhi and from the congress party i remember when arun jetli who was then the temporary defense minister and it was just on the day of the cabinet reshuffle and i remember the names were being speculated i happened to have a cup of tea with him and he told me giving this huge hint your new defense minister is going to be a tough one once the name of nirmala sitaraman was became official he smiled and he tells me see i told you she's a tough one you know her checkered history her professional rise also perhaps explain why she often comes across as a stern headmaster or headmistress well she began her career believe it or not as a saleswoman at a home decor uh, outlet called habitat in london she then goes on to a position rising high in pwc she was also a member of the national commission for women and that's where she decided that i have to fight for women i'm going to talk about our personal interactions with her as a woman journalist but before that i think the kind of misogyny that she faced during her early years perhaps also in london where she worked and later on when she joined active politics joining the bjp i think that shaped the way she reacts to the situations just to go quickly about her personal life and also her education she like me was a member of the jawala nehru university she studied there and you know there were many political parties at that point of time i remember that it was a left bastion and there was this organization which was called free thinkers it was a campus based student organizations whose claim to fame was the fact that you know it is not aligned to any political party it has its own mind and also it's going to fight only and only for the concerns of the students of jnu and not listen to any of their political arcas and hence the name free thinkers nirmala sitaraman was like me a free thinker and i think that's what also shaped because in later years she realized and she decided that come what may i'm going to have a mind of my own you see glimpses of that in her interactions with the media when she decides to take on the opposition uh, when she also decides to interact with us and i would say also when she decided to present the budget 4 years back in a breaking away from the cliche of holding a briefcase the whole idea of bahikhata was that hers 
you know it was in many sense showcased as a break away from the western concept of a finance minister carrying a briefcase with the budget papers inside parliament she held a red colored bahi khata which is the traditional way in which a bahi khata or accounts are kept by the money lenders in villages in smaller districts even till today it was becoming largely outdated and i remember in one of the many introductions when we asked her that who gave her this idea she said actually it was an idea given to me by my mother and her grandmother and if you remember those pictures which we are of course going to be showing the it was a red colored bahi khata with a red cover that was a sari which was chosen by her mother that this can be converted into a bahi khata and in fact the first sample was one which was stitched by her grandmother i remember it was also the covid times and there were tough times and you know when you are a finance minister you always face the brunt of the opposition maximum because economy also becomes the favorite dashboard of the opposition to take on the government and because she is a finance minister she faces it the maximum I'm not even going to discuss the goods and the highs of the budget over here and her past budgets because there are questions which the government also needs to answer and the questions which are asked of them and the jury is still out about the state of the economy though the IMF projection certainly seems to be saying that 2023 and 2024 India is going to be one of the fastest growing economy but you know it was not an easy one because I remember when there was a lockdown and journalists like me were given permission to travel out because of the nature of our work she would hold those those very limited debriefing sessions she would be very very careful to wear that mask and i remember in a very nice and thoughtful gesture and also which sends out a very powerful political message when we returned home a day later we found a box of khadi cloth masks given to all women journalists again she chose that very carefully she has a soft spot for women and for women journalists naturally because as she often tells us that she has faced barbs about sexism about misogyny and you know often issues are raised that she's incompetent because she's a woman if there's a failure in the economy then they say that she's a mahila and therefore she does not even have the brains even though she comes from an economic background you know to talk about her personal life she met her husband inside jawala nehru university and interestingly while she is a bjp leader he had a pro congress leaning he was also the media advisor to the andhra pradesh chief minister chandra babu naidu different political ideologies they but they managed to work together in close coordination daughter was also a journalist but again she faced barbs on that i remember in one of the many interactions her husband actually spoke out in uh, uh, about the economy and how she he raised questions over the state of the economy and this i think was back in 1920 or 21 and i remember the criticism was there on her and the people started taking barbs at her saying listen she's not been able to please her husband back home and look at his different point of view and she should listen to him the question i ask is that why should a woman or a wife be held accountable and responsible for the arguments or or mind of thinking of their spouse why can't they have their own line of thinking while she was mum about it but in private i realized and we all saw it it did hurt her she does have those interactions with women journalists in fact she has those special interactions post budget particularly where she calls only women journalists to her house and you know it's amazing the way she arranges it because and little little things again it also have a political messaging vocal for local going in and giving value to her indian handicrafts so i remember in the last interaction we had with her you know she personally would go to every table she would talk to us and then you know i remember there were people who came in from jaipur and they were making that lag bundle and bangles for us and there was a puja and she used to give us a puja kit so it's not an easy task and today i'm looking at nirmala sitaraman the woman more than as the finance minister because she plays and she wants to play both the role as a woman she also brought out this whole concept in which an allocation on the budget would be made for women nari to narayani was her scheme if you remember she also feels and always makes the point that if we women don't develop the country just cannot develop in a political system cutting across party lines where we all talk about misogyny where we talk about male journalists and attacking women journalists we talk about male politicians hitting out at women politicians not so much for their work done or not done but because of the gender they belong to people like nirmala sitaraman and many like her want to stand up and say the same thing what she told apala at that interaction in kota that you are a woman and you can do it 
So these are the little nuggets of Nirmala Sitaraman's life. And that's the reason why she's managed to rise within the BJP as well. And the Prime Minister, despite all the attacks on her, feels that she has been able to deliver. Deliver in the sense as to stand up to her critics. You know, her aggression also comes in from the fact that she has been one of the most articulate spokespersons of the BJP. And despite of being from South and she often takes pot shots as herself, she makes that effort to speak as much in Hindi as she done in English. Her staccato style, her no-nonsense demeanor, and she is a tough master. In fact, those who work very closely with her in her office say that she is a tough one. The same words of Arun Jaitley, it is very difficult to mislead her. And because she comes from an economic background, she ensures that every line which is written in the budget and every input she takes from all the stakeholders, including from her bosses in the government, is gone through her. I remember very quickly before I sign off, during the COVID time, she said, you know, because of the scrutiny and because of the secrecy, a special computer was set up at my home where I would constantly through the night interact with my colleagues in the ministry because the budget had to be out. But we also had to maintain the COVID protocol and also maintain the secrecy. She said I used to work late into the night to ensure that I'm able to help the people during the COVID times. Do give in your reactions. Let's not talk only about the economy in this case. Let's talk about many women, especially like Nirmala Sitaraman, who stand up to the male bastions, who breaks their glass ceilings. And to use the words of Arun Jaitley, she's not one to give up so easily. The more they attack her, the more she's going to hit back. Thank you so much for watching.